Hey there, welcome to my course on MC Script, a programming language purely for vanilla Minecraft data pack development. In the next section, we'll take a look at constants, groups, and also conditions, so if and else statements. In the last section, we looked at this for loop here, and we already used this notation here, dollar sign $i, to replace this whole thing with the current index. So that is actually a constant, and constant are replaced on generation, so they can't be changed while the data pack is loaded. And you also can't assign new values to any constants. This for loop gives you a predefined constant, but of course you can also define your own constant. That would look something like that, just with the const keyword, then the name of the constant, an equal sign, and then either a string or also a number. And later on you can just use it in any command you want. In the say command we use the a string constant, so this one here, and it just replaces this whole thing here with our say here can be a string. The number can also be used in the command, so we can say level equals a num, and it replaces the level here. This is pretty easy, right? We can actually use this, and let's say we want this part here in a separate constant. It is always recommended to define them first. So we just use the const keyword, then the name, let's say main text equals, this is the main, and we can also define a thing for the function. This is the function. Then we can replace this here, and just copy it in here, and do the same for our main. I just noticed my font size was a bit small, and also this has to be a string, obviously, and we have to put quotes around it to define that. Now we can save it, and we can see in the main.mc function, say this is the main, and say this is the function. What we can also do with constants, we can replace some parts of it. So let's say we have the a string again, and we can just say dot repl, the thing we want to match, and replace it. In the end it generates from here can be a string, to here can be the string. And this match thing here can also be a regex for already professional programmers out there. The next thing in this section is the group, and that's just a simple way to group execute subcommands together. Oftentimes you come up with slash execute as at p as at s multiple times with multiple com commands and there it makes sense to group that the entire thing together and avoid repetition. So we can just use the keywords as add positioned and some squirrely braces and then all the commands in there that we want to execute. And we can also list multiple groups into one whole group just with a comma here. Let's also do that in the main.mc script. We want the player's position here. So we just say as add a, then a comma, and say add, add s, and then our brackets here. And inside of here we can run our commands. Let's just set a block at the current position to a redstone block. And maybe it's better two positions above. So we can save it and take a look at the main.mc function. And there's a command that looks similar what you would also write. In Minecraft we can actually do a reload. Every tick there is a block play placed above us. And of course we can also use multiple other functions of mc script in these brackets here. We can also nest other groups inside of here, so we can just say positioned. My extension actually gives you a few snippets, so these things already autocomplete, we can just say enter, enter the position here. This has to be a string, and then we can move this command in here. Of course it does not make sense for one command to use this entire block of code here, 
but imagine you would write many commands in here. And with many commands, this would not be performant. So let's say run function player, and this just generates a new function for that, uh, outsources the commands. Groups are of course available for all execute subcommands. You can take a deeper look at this at my documentation on stevetus.com slash mcscript. But let's continue with the condition part. This is very similar to the groups. It also generates an execute command. In this case, execute if. And so far it looks very similar. You can also negate them. You can put an exclamation mark in front of it and that will just turn the if to an unless. And we have also the else statement. So if this one up here is not true, the else will trigger. And we can also use the else if statement to test another thing. And that would just generate a new command where the first condition is negated and the second not. And then we can also use an else statement and that would generate a command where both of the conditions are negated. So let's use this knowledge in our project. If you've seen the course overview, we had some great speed and jump blocks and I want to start making them. So obviously we have to test if the block is under us. In our case, we take the orange concrete for the speed block. So we just say if and then a string in here and that would be the normal condition you would write after in execute if. So that would be block obviously underneath the player and we want to have orange concrete and then we want to give our current player an effect called speed for one second without particles. Let's do also the jump boost. Here we want to use lime concrete and we also want to give the player an effect. Jump boost again for one second but only with the power three. So let's save that. In our new player.mc function we can see our two commands with the effect and we can right away test it in Minecraft. So let's reload the game and on orange concrete we get a speed effect and the green concrete just gives us jump boost. So that would be everything for this section. In the next section we'll take a deeper look at variables, also booleans and how to actually test these with the if statement. Thank you so much for watching. I see you're very active lately and MC script is widely used. So thanks for that. We'll see us in the next video. Bye.